B. White, the man, the author, the legend. His name was not actually E.B., of course. Those initials stand for Elwin Brooks White. And he went by Elwin until he went to Cornell University in New York State. And while he was at Cornell, he got the nickname Andy. And that was kind of a tradition at Cornell to name anyone who had the last name White after their first president, Andrew Dixon White. So that president's name was Andy, and then E.B. became Andy, and he's been Andy to friends and family ever since. Well then, Andy was the sixth and youngest child of the president of a piano firm and the daughter of a painter. So the creative arts were represented in his family from way back. And his big brother, Stan, was a professor of landscape architecture and the inventor of the vertical garden, by the way, and he taught his younger sibling to love and explore the natural world. Well, when Andy graduated, he went on to become a camp counselor at Camp Otter in Canada. He was really doing research for the Trumpet of the Swan, although he didn't know it at the time. And then he and a friend took off across the United States to do a little bit of exploring. And during that time, they had lots of adventures. He once walked 32 miles with a typewriter in order to exchange it for a new tire. And typewriters were not exactly laptop size in those days. He worked for a little while as a cub reporter on the West Coast, and then he headed back home to New York, where he just began sending in manuscripts to various publications. He discovered, he said, that writing of the small things of the day, the trivial matters of the heart, was the only kind of creative work which I could accomplish with any sincerity or grace. And of course, we think he accomplished it with a lot of sincerity and grace, among other things. So he kept on submitting manuscripts, and a friend of his told him about a magazine that had just been launched called The New Yorker. And this was in 1925. And he went out, and he bought a copy of that brand new magazine. It cost him a whole 15 cents, and found that it was a magazine that covered sort of the society and culture, politics and personality of New York. And nine weeks later, he was published in it, and he continued to submit manuscripts to the literary editor there, whose name was Catherine Engel. And he was hired as a staff writer there, but it took them months to convince him to come to the office, and additional weeks to get him to a staff meeting on the premises, because as it Turns out, he was really quite shy, especially of women. Nonetheless, they were able to talk him into coming to the office on Thursdays, and eventually, he married that literary editor, whose name was Catherine. And they went on to have a wonderful life together. And he wrote for The New Yorker for quite a while, contributing a regular column about life in New York. And as some of you probably know, he went on to write some of our very favorite stories of all time. The Trumpet of the Swan, Stuart Little, Charlotte's Web, all about animals who are able to express themselves with really wonderful words. He also collaborated with one of his Cornell professors named William Strunk. And the resulting book called The Elements of Style is known as the Bible of Writers everywhere. Everyone who is serious about writing has one within arm's length. It's probably one that you'll want to have on your desk as well as you develop your own writing skills. In the foreword to Charlotte's Web, the editor quotes White as saying, All I hope to say in books, all that I ever hope to say is that I love the world. And White also loved animals, farms, farming implements, seasons, and weather formats. But again, he did not really love people. Sometimes he would climb out onto the fire escape of his office in order to avoid meeting with someone who came to see him. He wasn't really a joiner. He later owned a farm in Maine and loved to spend time there, and he wrote and wrote and wrote from his special writing spaces there on the farm. If you look at these photographs, you'll recognize some of the scenes from Charlotte's Web. The setting of the book was based on places around his farm. And maybe by looking at them, you can also see why he once said, I would rather be unhappy in Maine than happy anywhere else. Here he is writing in his later years. What a wonderful view he had, huh? It's no wonder he didn't 
ever want to leave that beautiful place. Well, there's so much more we could say about E.B. White. Really, we could talk about him all day long. If you, if you want to learn more from a really wonderful picture book slash biography, please check out Melissa Sweet's book about him called Some Writer. We can't recommend it highly enough. She worked with White's granddaughter to collect truly special mementos, artifacts, pictures, and anecdotes that you won't find anywhere else. And we think the more you can get to know this wonderful man and author, the better. Thank you.